everyone welcome back to another video I am really excited to bring you all this video this one is going to be number nine in a series that I'm currently doing on my channel where I am showing you how to improve your coloring skills and bringing you tips and tricks and hacks and that sort of thing in this video we are going to look at a few different ways that you can blend your colored pencil work together and I'm going to show you a few different of those ideas some of the things that I'm going to show you are a couple things that you can just find in your house that you can use and bring to your coloring pages and be able to use them in a different way that you may not have ever thought. If you are new here and have never seen any of my videos before, I will make sure that the playlist for this series is linked in the upper right hand corner. Welcome to my channel. Please do subscribe if this is one of the first videos that you are stumbling across and you do enjoy it. My goal for my videos is to always make sure that someone has left the video or finished the video by learning something. So one of the first things I wanted to do in this video is I kind of wanted to, to bring some attention to one of my very generous patrons who supports me over on Patreon. For those of you that don't know, I do have a Patreon and I have several people that support me over there. I appreciate all of you. But I wanted to give a special shout out to Donna because she was extremely generous um, this month and she is just one of the sweetest people. She is in my Facebook group. She had shared a picture quite a while ago. It must have been, I don't know, maybe three, four weeks now, but she shared a picture in my Facebook group that was from Romantic Country, the same coloring book we're gonna be coloring in today, or I'm gonna be showing you some different um, ways to blend your colored pencils, but we're gonna be using one of those coloring books today, so I thought it was kind of cool that the picture that she is sharing with you came from the same series of coloring books but she shared this picture in my Facebook group and it got a whole lot of attention and if you're looking at the picture now you could probably see why it's absolutely gorgeous the colors that she used in the door of the picture are just really different and very very unique and it just kind of shows you that if you kind of just um, you know, think outside the box and you go to your set of colored pencils and you challenge yourself to use colors that you never really used before, you can come up with something very, very beautiful. And I always like to encourage all of you to do that because she says that she usually only uses brighter colors and that's her preference and it's funny because I'm actually doing the same thing right now I'm coloring a picture in the forest girl which I'm getting ready to bring you all a tutorial on as well to show you how to color textured wood and I made it a point to only pull the Prisma colors out that I don't usually use when I'm creating my color combinations and you will find that if you do that you will still be able to create, some, create something absolutely beautiful and it just, I don't know, it kind of makes you really proud of your work because you kind of are thinking outside of the box and you're extending your horizons and what you would normally do and you're just creating something very, very different. She says that she chose this one because she was able to prove to herself that she could work with greens and browns which are two of her least favorite colors and so by doing this she finally considered herself a colorist as well as an artist like i absolutely love that donna really intrigued me because she sent me a bunch of pictures and because i asked her to share a little bit about herself she showed me a little bit of what she used to do. She used to be a costume designer and she spent 20 years of creating costumes, the head pieces and the back pieces, and she worked extensively with the color selection and the concept design and the character development and the theme and writing all of the scripts and she says that she always loved color and writing so it was just such a wonderful experience for her. She says that her favorite thing is 
to draw whimsical faces. That is so cool. So in October 2020, she actually challenged herself to become a colorist after having had major surgery on her dominant hand, which affected her fine motor skills. The absolute joy of selecting and blending colors and watching the picture come to life using colored pencils fills that part of her creative soul that wants to create something beautiful. I absolutely love her story. I'm going to make sure that up on the screen right now, I've got some pictures of the costumes that she created. I don't know about you guys, but anytime I see where someone has really just put all their time and energy into creating and making something beautiful, whether it's a coloring page or anything else. I'm just a really creative person. And when you look at things that someone did or something they accomplished, it's to me very inspiring and very motivating. And so I hope that kind of does that for y'all as well. But I just wanted to be able to give her that little bit of a shout out. And I wanted to be able to share that with you and tell you all a little bit about her because I just really am so thankful for everyone that supports me in no matter what way y'all support me. We're going to go ahead and get into this video and we are going to start learning some different ways to blend our colored pencils. If you have not already subscribed, please do subscribe to my channel, turn your bell notifications on so that you always get notified every time I post a video. Guys, I have goals. <laughs> I am trying to hit 10,000 subscribers and I set myself a goal of doing that in three weeks and I'm already pushing to 9,200 and that only happened over just a couple days. <laughs> so I'm very excited about that. My channel is growing, growing, growing and I have all of you to thank for that. You are so appreciated. So today in this video, we are going to work a little bit in Romantic Country on the page that we've been using for this series. And I have a sheet back here, the same ones that I always make where I want to try to blend some colors together. We are going to get into this video now. So here is the page that we've been working on in this series and I've showed you many different things on this page. So again, that will be linked in the upper right hand corner if you would like to see all the different tutorials and tips and tricks and hacks that I showed you with this page. But today we're going to talk about everything blending. And the first thing that I have here with me is two of the most popular blending pencils that come from two different sets. This one here is the Full Blender Bright that comes from Karen Dosh. And this one here is the Colorist Blender from Prismacolor. Now, both of these blenders are basically just colored pencils without the pigment. And the reason we use them is to blend our colored pencils together. So there's a couple different things that you can do with these. You can use them in a couple different ways, and I'm going to show you a couple different ways. And after we go over this, we are going to move on to a couple other tools that you could use to blend your colored pencils, and I'm going to show you a really cool background trick as well. The first one I'm going to show you is I think I'm going to show you this uh, Prismacolor one, since we are working with Prismacolors. Now know that when you are using the blender pencils, it doesn't matter what brand blender pencil you're using. The Caran d'Ache pencils, the Luminance, and the Pablo pencils will work with the Prismacolor blender. They will work with the blender that came with their set. When you order the Luminance pencils, you actually get two of these blenders in there, but you can also purchase them separately, and I will have all of that linked down in the description box below if you are looking to purchase some of these blenders for yourself. But they are really cool tools. And we are going to, I'm going to show you just a few different ways to blend. So we're going to start with this. And I've already set some colors aside, so I'm going to grab my colors here. In this video, I'm not necessarily so much concerned about the colors that I use, as long as I've just got one dark color, one mid-tone, or my shadowing color, and then my mid-tone and my highlight color. And the whole point of this video is just to kind of show you a few different techniques that you could use the blender pencils for. 
and a few other ways to show you how to blend your colored pencils together. So I may be using all of them when I demonstrate. I may not be using all of them when I demonstrate. And I'm gonna show you just a couple different ways we can do that. So I think that I'm going to go ahead and use these pots up here just because it's kind of a small area. But the colors that I have, I will let you know that. I've got PC 1087, which is powder blue, PC 1025, which is periwinkle, and then I've got Caribbean Sea, which is PC 1103. So those are the ones that I have in my blue range. And then I've got a few greens laying over here because I want to show you something really cool as well with the greens. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try one technique first with the blender pencils. And I'm just going to put a little bit of this blue here on this side. And I'm going to decide where I want my highlight to be. And if I'm looking at this and I'm imagining the sun coming from this direction down here, I'm going to assume that there will be a little bit of a highlight right here in the center. So I am going to kind of leave a highlighted area, but I'm going to add enough pigment. And I'm not going to use the other colors right now of my color combination because I just want to show you exactly how the blender pencils work. They can be used in a few different ways. So you do have to have, when you're using your blender pencils, you do have to have um, enough of the pigment laid down on the page. And as you guys can see, you know, I'm always telling you to make sure you have sharp leads on your pencils. But in this case, I'm going to be showing you a background technique where I kind of need a more blunt lead. With that being said, I purposely picked out colors that had more dull leads and then I just kind of put them in my doll 133 and maybe just gave it like a quick, a quick uh, one turn sharpen. So let's go ahead and let me show you exactly what these do. So you can already see the colors being pulled together. And this is one technique that you can use where you want to kind of preserve the white of the paper but spread the other pigment around. But look how cool that is. See, it just kind of spread it all around. I don't even have to add other colors in there if I don't want to. I don't want you all to think, like I know a lot of you watch my videos because you're trying to learn about colored pencils and stuff like that. But when you're first starting out, don't let any of my videos like really overwhelm you. I want you guys to know that like, even if you just want to color like this, like look how I use that blender pencil and I still created a highlight there. And I only used one pencil. So I used the periwinkle. And I just can come back in here too and I can add even more pigment. Just like this. And remember I told you guys that um, you have one pencil, but that one pencil has very many different values of color in it. When you start adding more and more layers, you actually are laying more of that pigment down on the paper and so you're creating a darker color. And you can do that as many times as you want, as much as the paper will withstand before you get rid of all of the tooth in the paper. And this paper in these books, it's kind of I don't know, it's it's not really toothy, it's more of a smoother paper, but the Prismacolors do go down very nicely on um, this paper. But if I just go in a circular motion like this, I only used one pencil and my blender pencil and I still created something really pretty. So those of you that are beginner colorists don't always think that you need to use so many different colors in your color combination if you don't want to. If you just want to use one pencil and a blender pencil, you can surely do that. And I show you guys all the time how to preserve the white of the paper to create your highlight. I mean, I did it here and I did it again here. I do it all the time. You don't always have to use a highlight color, but the blender pencil will really help you to blend your colors together. So I hope 
that you're learning something from this video. <laughs> now I'm going to show you, let's try it with maybe a different color. Let me go ahead. No, I don't really want to use greens. Let me go ahead and use my brighter blue. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to use my brighter blue on this other pot. Let me do this one since this one's bigger. But I'm going to come up here and I'm going to do it and I'm going to show you the other blender pencil and how that one works. And again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm pulling up on the pressure of my hand as I come in a little bit closer. And I'm leaving that white of the paper. And then I'm going to come in with my Caran d'Ache blender. And I'm going to pull these colors together. And as you can see, it is spreading the pigment around, but I'm actually having to work a little bit harder with this blender. And that may be because, oh look, it's really, it's doing a really good job now, but that may be because I'm using the Prismacolor pencils. And I'm also noticing with this one that it is kind of creating kind of a grayer area rather than white and see it's really cool to uh, see this on video and do these tests because it helps you guys to make a determination as to what it is you want to buy to add in with your coloring supplies you know what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go grab a couple of the Caran d'Ache colors because I want to see the difference and I want to be able to show all of you if the Caran d'Ache blender actually works better with the Caran d'Ache luminance pencils. So let me go grab those. I went and grabbed some pencils from my luminance set and I'm just gonna tell you what the numbers are because the writing on these is a little bit hard to see. So I've got 185, 171, and 661. So we're gonna try a few different things with these and these pencils are really beautiful pencils. Like they laid and I, I've not tried them in this coloring book yet. So we're gonna see how they work in this coloring book on the smoother paper. But let's go ahead and lay these down. Oh my gosh, these pencils guys. <laughs> Oh, when these pencils hit the paper, it is, I can't even explain it. If you guys love Prismacolors and you're looking for another artist grade set of pencils to purchase, I would put these on your wish list for sure. I will make sure I have a link down in the description box below for these pencils. They are absolutely wonderful. Let's go ahead and try it first with just one color and see if we can use the blender and blend just that one color. Let me turn my book here just a little bit so you guys can see a little bit better. I always have to try to concentrate on holding my hand at the right angle and it is so hard to make sure I don't put my hand in the way, but look at that, see? This works much better with these pencils than it did with the Prismacolors and it just kind of spread the color around beautifully. And it may be the paper, but that worked beautifully. The thing that I note, one thing that I did notice is when I used the Prismacolor blender, it actually kept that area a little wider, but when I used the Caran d'Ache blender, it actually kind of gave it a little bit of a gray look where the um, color is kind of meeting and I was trying to pull the two colors from the both sides together. Let me go ahead and come over this a little bit more here with the Prismacolor blender and see what happens. And I will say that the Prismacolor Blender does feel a little bit scratchier than the Luminance Blender. I don't know if you guys can hear that. And 
the Prisma color seems to leave a few little pieces of dust around. But they both work beautifully, but on this paper in this book, I'm finding that the um, Caran d'Ache blender works better with the Caran d'Ache pencils because I had to come in here and I really had to use hard pressure. I mean, it did start blending, but I really had to use much harder pressure to get it to blend together. And even still, yeah, even still, I still don't like the way this one looks as much as this one here or this one here. So let's go ahead and try something else. And we're gonna use more than one color now. We're actually gonna use a highlight color and we're gonna see what we could create doing that. I don't think there's no more, no more pots. I already colored them all. <laughs> let's come down here and maybe move on to one of these little jars here. So let me see. Let's go ahead and use the Prisma colors and let's use our blue combination. I'm going to go ahead and do this one here so that I'm not right up against this green one. So we're going to go ahead and do this one here that says hops on it. And I'm going to start with my darkest color. I'm going to turn my book a little bit more so my hand stays out of the way. And I'm just going to lay some of this color down here. This is my darkest color. And then I am going to come in with the next color. I think this one is the Caribbean, yeah, Caribbean C1103. And then I am going to come in with 1087, and this is my powder blue. And let me add a little bit more of my darkest color. I'm feeling like I should have an even darker color here. Let me just lay a little bit more pigment down here and see how this works out. Now see, I said before that I wasn't so much worried about the colors and the combinations because it's more of a blending type video or tutorial. And here I am worried about that now. <laughs> okay, so let's come back and blend those together with our Prisma color now that we've got three colors. And I'm just gonna kind of go in a circular motion. And look at those colors just blend together. Is that so satisfying? And see, I still preserved my highlight right down here that I wanted to keep. Now, know that you can go back and you can add darker colors to this and really kind of make it pop and look more so like this one over here when I did that tutorial in a previous video. And like I said, that's not the point of this video. <laughs> I just really wanted to test out some different blending techniques so that you guys can watch all of that come together on camera. Now we're going to try the same thing and I've got my three colors. I'm going to start over here with my darkest color because I don't know the difference in the variance of the colors between this and this color I've got in my hand. I think this one might have more blue in it. Oh, see, it's a lot like that color over there. So let's go ahead and keep that over here. And I'm going to lay this color down. And then I'm going to come in with a lighter color. And I think I'm going to put my lighter color over here. Oh, I really like that. And then my lightest color, and this one's very different. 
than the other colors in this combination. This one's more of a blue. A very light blue. I love this color. Okay, let me add a little bit more of my darkest color. These pencils, y'all, are so, so, like, look at that pigment just go down on the paper. Goodness. They have so much pigment in them, and I have never used these pencils in this book, and oh my goodness, now I need to. Look at that. Okay, so let's come back with our Caran d'Ache blender and we are going to go in a circular motion and we are going to blend these together. Look how it just spreads that pigment around. Wow, so that is very, very cool. So as you can see, it really worked really, really well just spreading that pigment around and just really bringing it all together. And if you wanted to come back and add a little bit more color, you could always do that. And it's kind of standing off nicely next to this um, other jar that was here. I thought the colors were going to be too close together. But I think a circular motion does work best when you're trying to pull these colors together. But again, as you can see, I see a lot of like, I don't know, kind of like a grayish tinge here where you can see that the paper was just white. So I don't know. I really can't tell. Like this one's much softer, but the Prismacolor one is more scratchy. I really like how the Prismacolor one works with the Prismacolors. I really, really do. Because it does add a little bit of that gray, but not necessarily as much as a Caran d'Ache one. Now, if you were just using it to straight up blend all of your colors together, I think that would be a completely different story. So I wanted to show you guys a couple other things. Those are the blender pencils and how they work. But I wanted to show you a really cool idea that you could bring to your coloring pages. And I think that I am going to use just a variety of greens that I have here to test this out. And gosh, I pulled out my chartreuse, which was one of my favorite colors, but I think that I've got too much of a sharp lead on that one for this technique. So let me go ahead and get these that have a more blunt tip. To be able to do this, you need to have more of a blunt tip on your pencils. So let me tell you what colors I have. I have PC 913, PC 920, and PC 910. And I'm gonna show you a little bit over here of what I am trying to do. So we're gonna make sure, we're gonna use this as our darkest color. And this is just like a really cool background idea and I'm gonna show you how you could blend it together once you get it all down on your paper. And as I'm laying some of this down, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna speed this part up to music because it's pretty much self-explanatory what I'm doing.
y'all saw me just kind of sporadically lay those colors around and just kind of blend them through a little bit and I just took the three colors and I just laid them just kind of all over the place and I made sure that I had enough pigment down on the paper and that they were cut the colors are kind of going into one another so that is what I was trying to accomplish and so now I'm going to take what all of us can find in our house this little cotton ball and I am going to use hard pressure with my hand and I'm just going to go in a circular motion and you will see this just kind of spread around. that the cotton ball kind of picked up some of the pigment and it also kind of just blended it all together and it spread around but this is a really cool thing that y'all could do if you want to add a background to your pages so I grabbed three of my Prismacolors I have PC 1096 PC 989 and PC 910 and I am going to color a little bit on this shelf here and I'm going to show you something else that you can use that is something that you could find in your home and you can use it to kind of pull your colors together so let's go ahead and lay some of this down and then I'm going to add in some of my chartreuse oh gosh look at those two colors mixed together how beautiful and let me go ahead and add a little bit of this color This is a very interesting combination. <laughs> oh, it's actually kind of pretty. Oh my gosh, guys, I'm thinking leaves now. Totally thinking leaves. <laughs> Let me add a little bit more of this color here. Now, I want to show you something else you can use to bring these colors together and kind of blend them out. I have a Q-tip. And so I'm going to take my Q-tip and I'm just going to go in a circular motion. And I'm going to just go over these colors. And see how it just kind of blends them together. You have to be very careful though. If you're trying to keep the colors within a certain area, try very hard with your Q-tip not to go outside of that area. Like the cotton ball, it worked much better here because it's got such, or so much of a wider surface. And so it was really great to be able to use for a background. So this is something that you could use if you're trying to keep your colors within a smaller area like this. And then, of course, if you needed to, like for me, a little bit of the pigment went outside, but that's nothing that my handy dandy little mono eraser that I show you guys all the time won't take care of. And if you were doing a background, that really doesn't matter. So that's another way that you could blend your colors together. So the next thing I want to show you is how a tortillon works. Now you could find these in your local art supply store. You could get them at Michael's, you can get them at Hobby Lobby, you can get them on Amazon, and I will make sure that I have a link down in the description bar below if y'all would like to be able to get one of these for yourself. But I have a smaller one, and then I have a larger one, and they are black on the tips because I also draw. And so this is my graphite pencils that I was using to blend and spread the color on those. Now I want to show you a little trick on those. To be able to sharpen your tortillion, you can use just your typical nail file. And this is really good if you want to get some of that color off the tip because you want to use it for something else. So this kind of just cleans it, not necessarily, I think I said sharpen, but you don't want to sharpen it. <laughs> you want to clean it so that it's nice and fresh for whatever it is that you're doing. 
when you're switching colors or whatever. And then it will kind of just do that. And then I just kind of pull that off and set it aside. But yeah, then it's nice and clean again, thanks to the nail file. <laughs> okay, so let me go ahead and just lay some colors down and I am going to show you. Let's go ahead and go back to our blues and I'm just gonna move to this other side here. And I'm gonna lay these down and show you how that works. And you guys watching this video and watching some of my demonstrations, you can kind of decide for yourselves what it is that you wanna use. And that's why these videos are so great because I'm kind of testing everything right before your eyes and everybody has a different idea of what they like and you guys know that when I do my videos I don't ever like I'll tell you what I like and stuff like that a lot of the times but if I'm using a certain colored pencil or something or I'm testing out a colored pencil and I really don't like it somebody else is going to really enjoy using those colored pencils. So it's not for me to say that I don't like them, it's just for me to tell you exactly my feelings about the pencils and how they perform. And I always do tell you the good about things too because every color supply, every, every single coloring supply or whatever you can use to bring to your coloring pages, there is always something positive about it. Even though it may have some negatives, there are always going to be some things that I like about something. And I don't know, life is that way too, right? <laughs> yeah, that's how life is too. And you always need to weigh your negatives and positives. If there is something negative, it always has a positive and that's usually how I live my life and I feel like everybody should live life the same way. But I went and grabbed my Peacock Blue because I just, I don't think there's enough of their variance in these colors and I wanted to have something that was just a little bit different and added a bit, bit more color because you guys know me, even though I sat here and I was like, I'm not worried about my color combinations because I'm just showing you guys different blending um, tools to be able to use. I'm over here still needing some other colors <laughs> because I really, I don't know, I really want to be able to show you how some of these things work. And now I think I have enough of the colors laid down there. And I can come back with my tortillion and show you how that just kind of blends the colors together. So again, I'm going in a circular motion. And again, make sure you kind of stay inside. See how it just pulled those colors into the white area? See how well that works? But this is something else you can use to blend your colors together. The other way to blend your colors together would just be to use either your lightest color or your white pencil. And I will go ahead and for those of you that have not seen my videos previously and you're very much a beginner, let's go ahead and do that as well. So I'm just going to lay some of this color yeah, I don't think it'll take too long to be able to do this, but I'm gonna lay my darkest color down here. And I'm gonna kinda of do the same thing that I did over here. And then I'm gonna come back with this color. This is PC1103, my Caribbean C. And I'm just gonna lay a little bit of that around kind of pulling some of these colors through. 
And then I'm going to come back with my powder blue. And I'm going to lay a little bit of that down. And I have my white Prismacolor and I am just going to come back with my white Prismacolor. Always make sure the tip of your white Prismacolor doesn't have any color on it. And as you could see, mine has blue on it because apparently I used it on top of blue. So I'm just coming over here and coloring with it a little bit to make sure, and it wouldn't matter that much because I'm using blue, but if you were using something like red or something, you don't want that red to come off on your blue. But this is a really great way to bring your colors together and this white Prismacolor, I will tell you all, works on no matter what pencils you're using. It's a really great tool to use if you're using more budget-friendly pencils and they don't blend as well as something like a Prismacolor, like I did a video, and I'll try to find it and link it in the upper right-hand corner. But I did a demonstration and showed you exactly how that works with Castle Arts. But this just kind of brings all the colors together and it burnishes them out. Now, if you were going to do this, you don't want to do this until you're sure that you've got all your pigment and all the color that you want down on the paper. And don't always feel like you need to burnish because we use burnishing for different uh, reasons. Like if I was coloring, say, clothing on a girl that I was coloring on a Deborah Muller page. I actually did a video like that and I showed you, but um, I don't know, sometimes... When you're doing clothes, you want to uh, burnish it all out and give it like a, I wouldn't say flatter look, but kind of just bring all the colors together. And other times you want to create texture on the clothing. If you were trying to create texture, then you wouldn't want to burnish your colors together. At least I don't. I like some of the lines to be able to show. And when I burnish and go over with my white pencil or even use my lightest color, let me go ahead and do that now and show you what happens when you use your lightest color. So if I lay some of this color down here, I don't think I used this color in the last one, and I'm just kind of being sloppy here because I'm just trying to get some color down on the paper so I could show you the last technique. And those were the ones that were too close together. So let's go ahead and get this color in here that is going to really add some dimension and variance of colors. And like I always tell you guys, if you've got something here, you know, like laying to the front of something, you always make sure you use your shadow color there so that it is darker. But you guys know that I don't ever, ever color this fast. I'm just trying to get some of the color down. So the idea here is you would take your lightest color. This is another way that you could kind of just bring all your colors together. You would come back with your lightest color. And for me, I like to go in a circular motion. And it is going to blend all those colors together. In most cases, it will create a different color as well because you're kind of blending those colors together and it is going to create even a much different look and some people like to do this some people like to use their white but for me it all depends on the look that I'm trying to achieve but that is how you use your lightest color of your color combination to be able to just blend all of your colors together and give it that much smoother finished or burnished look. So you can use your white pencil to burnish the colors together or you can use your lightest color in your color combination. You can even go back and get an even lighter color and use that to bring all your colors together. So like say your combination was blues and your lightest color was something like this in your color combination and you've already got three colors, you can always come back and get like your powder blue, your sky blue light, or one of those that is much lighter. Like here I have 
here I have my cloud blue and you could see by with the Prismacolors you can usually tell what the color is going to look like when you lay it down on the paper but this cloud blue is a little bit lighter than the powder blue and so I could always come back with the powder blue and I can use this one to kind of blend the colors together. That is all that I have for y'all today and I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you learned something that you didn't already know. <laughs> because like I said, that's my goal for all of my videos and I want you all to know that I really appreciate you uh, watching my videos and those of you that subscribe to my channel and those of you that are in my Facebook group and you are a very interactive part of that. If you are not already in my Facebook group, please do join us over there. It is a wonderful community of colorists, and we even have some artists in the group, and we are over 4,000 members now. It is a wonderful, supportive community, so please do join us. I will have a link in the description box below for that, as well as my email list and a link to my Patreon if you would like to support me over there. And as always, happy coloring. Bye.